Hydrate and acid this JG Maker R1 3D printer. So let's start from the beginning. Inside the box we will find pack of things, which I will show later. This printer is mostly pre-assembled, so you spend a little time to set it up. You also got 250 grams of PLA filament. Inside the bag is the wearing card, which is covered with protective film, which you need to remove from both sides. There are one big SD card reader and inside are micro SD card with adapter, one glue stick, one extra nozzle, different bolts for, for assembly, some basic tools for setup, filament cutting pliers, and you will get some more filament, which I think is PLA also, USB cable. Assembly is easy and it don't take much time. You need to put together two main pieces. This printer don't have a paper manual, but all instructions are available on the SD card. And the assembling video also. Extruder cable is fixed to the x-axis frame next to the lead screw and cable will be connected to the extruder with connector. Filament holder is fixed to the frame with two bolts and you need to add filament sensor. I had one setback with a small bolt which holds the sensor. The threaded insert inside the holder started spinning and came off. It was a small problem which I fixed with the glue. Last thing to install is screen holder and touchscreen. And some wires are needed to connect. I also had little bed and extruder wobble so I adjusted the eccentric nuts. R1 has dual care direct drive extruder, which should handle flexible filaments also. Double cooling fans. Peel plate is flexible and has sandpaper like surface, which has good adhesion. There are also holes in the corners, why are they there, I don't know. There is one glue stick included with the printer, but this sandpaper surface I would not use it. Cleaning will be a mess and glue runs out quickly. On the back corners are limiters, which helps you to align the bed plate. Build volume is 230 by 230 by 250 mm. Build plate is fixed in place, no manual adjustment available, but no need for this either. This printer has double stepper motors on the axis and double lead screws, which has connected with the belt. Lead screws also have a bearing on the top of the frame, which will hold them stable. The screen cable is done longer, and you can take it off the holder easily. I like it. X and Y axis have both belt tensioners. R1 also has a storage box for your tools and extra nozzles. The power socket of this printer is basic like other ones except the power switch is green, not red like most printers have. Actually, it makes no difference what color is it, it just caught my eye. SD card slot and USB connection. Boot time is about 6 seconds, which is really fast. This printer has automatic leveling. You need to adjust baby steps first and after that you can use auto level. I have used auto leveling only once. I had no need to do it more. I only adjusted baby steps during printing. If we take a look at this printer interface, we can see many different things you can change or adjust. Leveling is done and it's time for the prints. First filament I used was Crat Kit PLA. I haven't used Crat Kit filaments before. Inside the box comes Ziploc bags, which is actually nice. If you have problems with moisture, it can help you keep your filaments dry. Screen getting dirty, touch screen downsides, but, is it but I still like it more than non touch screens. File names are small and little hard to read, maybe that's why there is a removable screen. The burst line or test line or what it's called don't fit on the bed. This print is pre sliced model from SD card. I moved the C8 a little bit lower to get better first layer. I measured hotbed to see the temperature at different points. Temperature is set to 16 degrees. 
Measurements aren't 100% accurate, but you can see left front corner has lower temp, which should not have effect on breed quality. R1 has filament sensor, which should be detected run out and post the print. After filament refill, you can resume printing. I cut the filament to see if this is working or not. Sensor detected filament run out and post the printing. Notice came out to change filament. I changed the filament and hit the play button. Printer continue printing and resume printing worked as it should. This printer should also have resume printing feature when power goes out. To test it, I cut the power and uh, tried it. After the printer boots up, message comes up. You can choose continue or stop print. I choose continue. Printer heats up and start printing again. The bottom line is where filament ran out and upper when power went out. Bottom one has under extrusion and upper one has layer lines sticking out and small blob also. The quality also depends where pause is happening, when printing wall or infill. The top has very nice smooth sur surface. One of the things I like about this printer is the low noise it makes. It's between 41 to 48 decibels, mostly on the lower 40s. One more thing I usually do when testing 3D printers, I measure power consumption. During the printing, it's around 50 to 60 watts and peaks up to 340 watts. One benchy printing took about 0 0.165 kilowatt hours. I measured it from switching printer on to print finished. Printing took about 1 hour and 27 minutes. On the SD card you can find JG Great Slicer, which is actually Cura Slicer. This printer is advertised as faster 3D printer than ordinary printers. Benji printed with 0.25mm layer height 36 minutes, others 1 hour and 24 minutes. Interesting is that pre-sliced Benji from SD card took 1 hour and 34 minutes, why it wasn't 0.25mm and printed 36 minutes. So I tried faster speeds, I used 0.2mm layer height because I usually use it and printing speed 180mm per second, which will be R1 max speed. Print was done in 55 minutes, but I see the quality is starting to go down, so I didn't try even faster speeds. Let's watch what print quality I got. The first one is the pre slice Benji from SD card printed with PLA and it came out good. That yellow one is printed with ABS. Maybe not as good as PLA one, but good results for ABS. Petitation was good, no cracks or warping. First DPO print wasn't good. I used default settings from the slicer. After some changes, I got much better one. Some stringy but little more retraction should make it even better. Overall printed nice, no under extrusion or overhang problem. PTG printed fine also. Layer lines are a little bit too visible. It means that layer consistency could be better. Next five prints are all pre-sliced models from SD card. The raft came off very easy and all the joints are moving. This rows had some problems with under extrusion. One joint broke when I removed raft. This model isn't made to print so small. There also was a second spool holder model on SD card, came out good. The layer lines looked too visible and I tightened the belt's middle print. The quality went better, belts were too loose. Silk PLA printed fine also. I tried waste mode also, there are some holes overall quality is fine. I printed tolerance test two times, first one only three spins. I changed the high settings and I got much better one, only 0 0.15 and 0 0.1 aren't moving. This fox is printed with 0.12mm layer height and it came out very good. My opinion about this 3D printer is that R1 is easy to set up and also easy to use 3D printer, which has good print quality. 
pet radiation is good even with ABS and it makes low noise. The price is affordable and it has different features like auto leveling, filament sensor, resonant printing and more. It will be good first printer to get. That was my experience with the JCE Maker R1 3D printer. More info in the description and thanks for watching.